All right, everybody, we are going to do a review video real quick for this unit. Um, oops, sorry, had to get up there. All right, so um, I'm not going to do everything. We know how these reviews work typically. Um, I do just maybe one or two from each part, uh, and then I expect you guys to do the rest. Uh, we're going to look at number one. And then we're going to also do number three, one and three for this section, okay? So number one, uh, this is, of course, substitution elimination. No calculator allowed for these sections. Um, so here we have 6x plus 7y plus 5z equals 20. 12x plus 7y equals 17, and then x equals 2. It's really easy when I'm given x equals a number or any variable equals a number because now what I can do is I can easily just plug this in to the next equation to find what y equals. So I can take x equals 2 and plug it in to where I see x. Anywhere that x is, I can plug 2 in because I know x equals 2. So 12 times 2 plus 7y equals 17. Okay, then simplifying here, I get y equals negative 1. And then I can use y equals negative 1 and x equals 2 to figure out what z equals by plugging it into that last equation right here. So 6 times x is 6 times 2 plus 7 times 1, so 7 times negative 1, or, uh, sorry, 7 times y, and then plus 5z equals 20. And then I can solve this out. I get 12 minus 7 plus 5z equals 20. 12 minus 7 is 5. I can subtract 5 from 20. I end up getting 5z equals 15. Getting z by itself, z equals 3. So now I have these three. Okay, so that's how you do it through substitution with some of those really easy problems if you're already given the variable. Y'all just plug it in and then see where it goes from there. Um, now we're going to do the number 3 here. Um, and we are going to, this time we have to actually use an elimination. And I like to use elimination for these because I think they're kind of easier. Um, so we will actually go through the same problem with both substitution and elimination. So I think that's what we're going to do with this. So first let's go through this number three. Okay, so first with elimination. And if you prefer substitution, then go ahead and skip over like, a minute or two to substitution. So elimination first. With elimination, our entire goal is to eliminate a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try to get these two equations to a point where I can eliminate a variable. Now why am I using these two equations? Because they are the only parts of the equations that have x and z, x and z. This equation has a random y. I cannot use that y, it's not going to help me, so I'm not going to use that equation. So I need to be able to get these to a point where I can eliminate a variable. To eliminate a variable, I need the coefficient to be the same. So let's think about what we want to do. I think I want to eliminate uh, x. So to eliminate x, I need their coefficients to end up being the same. So I need to come up with a number that is uh, similar for both negative 3 and negative 5 that I can multiply to be the same, the closest number. It's called the least common multiple. And clearly, negative 3 and negative 5 have 15 in common, right? So I can get these up to 15 by multiplying this top equation by 5 and this bottom equation by 3. And yes, you're going to be multiplying the entire equation. But here's the deal. I need one of them to be positive and one of them to be negative. So instead of making one of them, uh, instead of making both of them 5 and 3, because both of these are negative, see? I'm going to make this negative 5. Oops, let me see if I can fix this so you can see. 
I'm going to make this one negative 5 and this one positive 3. Okay, so that's what I'm going to multiply. Okay, so negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15x, right? And then negative 5 times 3z is negative 15z. And then negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. Hold on. Okay, so now we're going to multiply this one out, and we are going to get 3 times negative 5 is 15, negative 15x, 3 times 7z is 21z, 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, so now notice how we have 15x and negative 15x. We're going to add these two equations together, and when we do that, 15x plus negative 15x cancel each other out, and we end up with 0, which was our entire goal. And then adding the rest of them, we get 21 plus negative 15z is going to be 6z, and then negative 30 plus 12 should be negative 18. To get z by itself, we'll divide by 6, and z equals negative 3. Okay? So then from there, you're going to do exactly what you did for this one. You now know that z equals negative 3, so now you can plug z equals negative 3 into one of these first two equations to get what x equals. And after you have x, you can plug them both into this equation to figure out what y is. Okay? So now let's look at what it would be for elimination, excuse me, substitution. So for substitution, we're going to end up using the same two equations because we have to use the ones that have the same variables, right? So we're going to use those same two equations, but this time we have to get a variable by itself. Um, and so I actually think that the top equation would be the easiest for that. And I want to get x by itself, okay? So that's what we're going to start with. So to get x by itself, I first have to subtract 3z. Let me rewrite this. Ah, come on. Okay, so to get x by itself, I have to get rid of 3z. So I'm going to subtract 3z from both sides. And I get negative 3x equals negative 3z plus 6. Then to get x by itself, I divide by negative 3. So x is equal to z minus 2. So z minus 2 is what I'm going to plug in to this next equation for wherever I see x. So for wherever I see x, I'm going to plug in z minus 2. So bringing this down, I've got negative 5x, so negative 5 times z minus 2 plus 7z equals 4. So this becomes negative 5z uh, plus 10, negative 5 times negative 2 is 10 plus 7z equals 4. Okay, so 7z and negative 5z add to equal 2z. And then I need to get the z's by themselves, so I subtract 10. And I end up getting 2z equals negative 6. So z equals negative 3. Which, gee whiz, that's what we got when we did elimination. So as you can see, these both work. Um, it just depends on what you feel more comfortable with. So some of them are easier elimination. Some of them are easier substitution. Just do what you feel more comfortable with. Um, and as long as it's right, I won't be too upset. Um, I won't be too upset. So uh, that is that. Okay, so that's that for that section. We're going to move on to the next section.
So now we're going to perform some following some operations on matrix B. Um, I just want to do B, I think. I'm just going to do one of them because they're all pretty straightforward. Essentially, all you're doing here is you are using the rows. So this is row 1. This is row 2. This is row 3. Remember, columns hold up buildings. These are columns. Rows go this way. Okay? So row 1, row 2, row 3. So what we're doing in this situation is we are multiplying row 1 by negative 2. Then whatever we get, we're adding it to row 2. And then rewriting the matrix where whatever we get is replacing row 2. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So first we're going to multiply uh, row 2 by negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite that. Negative 2 times row 2. 4, 5, 8. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Now we're going to add the whatever we got to row 2. Oh no, I messed up. Okay, scratch all that. I am so sorry. You're probably all really confused. Okay, I apologize. I was kind of doing number C. Actually, oh, hey, cool thing. We can actually just make this C. I've changed my mind. That way, we're still doing the same work. This time, instead, just move it to C. So, essentially, we're doing C. Um which that's what I was kind of doing, but for some reason, I, I don't know. I thought we were doing this one. Whatever, now we're doing C. We're not doing B, we're doing C. Okay, so C should be row two times negative two, which is what we did, plus row one. So row one is four, uh, two, five, and three. So we're gonna add row two, which is row two times negative two, to row one. And we get negative 6, negative 5, negative 13. So now the last thing we have to do is just rewrite the matrix. But this time, instead of row 2 being what it is in here, row 2 will now be what we got. So everything else is the same. The top row is the same. The bottom row is the same. The only thing that's different is our new row 2. See? Okay. All right. Sorry for that confusion. Just do C instead of B. Okay, cool. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Y'all could probably do the rest on your own. So let's look at number 10. Uh, this is essentially just plugging it into a matrix and using a calculator to solve the matrix. So essentially the first thing you have to do is create the matrix. So you're going to create your coefficient matrix, making sure it's in standard form, meaning your variables, your variables on one side, and your number on the other. Variables equal number, okay? So that's what you're going to do first. Make sure everything is in standard form. And luckily, luckily for this first one, it's already all in standard form. But for number 12, it's not. So just be aware, for number 12, you need to get it into standard form. All right. So here we go. Matrix of coefficients. I'm going to start with the numbers before each letter. So x's go first. The number before x is negative 4, number before y is negative 5, and then negative 1. So this is matrix A. Okay, and then continuing here, it's negative 2, negative 5, negative 2. Here it's negative 2, 5, 2. And then matrix B, the equals are going to be 8, 12, and 4. I'm sorry, 18, 12, and 4. So y'all, using that matrix information, um, there is a notes sheet on Schoology. If you don't have it, or for some reason you're forgetting, or you don't have your paper with you, um, that tells you how to plug these into the, to the graphing calculator. Um, 
because I can't really show that on here, but you're going to plug this into matrix A. It's a three by three dimension matrix. Then you're going to plug this into matrix B. It's a three by one matrix. And then using your calculator, you're going to plug in matrix A to the negative one times matrix B and then hit enter and you should get your answer of and answer should be x equals negative 4 y equals 0 and z equals negative 2 and that should have in your calculator uh, with the matrix it kind of it looks like this but that's what this means x equals negative 4 y equals 0 z equals negative 2 okay okay so that's it uh, for this section I can't really show you anything else. Um, I showed you how to put it into the matrix. Um, I told you you need to get it in standard form, but we talked about a standard form equation up there. Uh, let's move on to a word problem. We might end up doing two word problems, just so you guys can kind of see, but I want to do 15, and I think I want to do 17, so we'll see. So first one, a youth group with 26 members is going skiing. Each of the five chaperones will drive a van or sedan. Van seat seven, sedan seat five. How many of each type of vehicle could transport all 31 people to the ski area? So we first need to look at what we're looking for. We're looking for how many of each type of vehicle. And the vehicles that we have are vans or sedans. So that means that's our variable. That's what we're looking for. So V will be van. G, go figure, right? S will be sedan, okay? So now what we are going to do is we're going to think about what this is asking. First, how many total seats do I need to be able to fill? You may get tripped up by 26, but you're forgetting about the chaperones. There's a total of 31 people. So that means one equation will equal 31 because I need to fill 31 seats. If I'm talking about seats... How many seats does the van seat? Seven. The van seats seven. And then the sedan seats five. So I have seven seats per van, five seats per sedan, and I need 31 total seats. So my first equation is going to be 7V plus 5S. Okay, first equation down. Now I need to think about how many total vans I or how many total vehicles I need. Okay, who's going to be driving the vehicles? The chaperones. How many chaperones do I have? Five. So I need five vehicles. So my second equation is going to equal five. So out of my total vehicles, vans and sedans, total, there are going to be five of them. So that means however many vans I have, plus however many sedans I have, that looks like a five. However many sedans I have must equal five, and that's my other equation. Um, don't worry about this being only two equations. Remember, we only have two variables. If I only have two variables, I will only have two equations, and that is okay. So that's the end of this problem. Okay, moving on. Make sure we know how to do 17. So uh, this one, I think, is a three variable. Uh, a group of backpackers hiked 38 kilometers over three days. The first day, they hiked one kilometer less than three times as far as the second day, and the third day, they hiked this. Uh, how far did they hike the first day? So our goal is to see, um, I guess, our goal first is to look at the variables. So. The variables are the three days, right? We're looking for how many, uh, how much they hiked the first day. That means that our variables must be the days. So I'm going to make day one be A. B is going to be second. C will be third. Okay. So let's look at the first thing that we really see. On the first day, that's A. They hiked one kilometer less than three times the second. So that means that our first day is going to be equal to the second day, but it's going to be equal to three times the second day, 
but it's going to be one kilometer less than three times the second day. That's my first equation. The second thing says the third day, they hiked two kilometers less than the first day. So the third day, that's C, they hiked the same amount as the first day, minus two. And then the last thing is right here. A group of backpackers hiked, backpackers hiked 38 kilometers over three days. That means over all three days, A plus B plus C, they hiked 38. Okay? That's how you set it up, uh, and that's going to be it. I will stop here with the video. Um, hopefully this helped. I don't remember if I said my intro, uh, so I'm going to say it now as an outro. Wiki, wiki, what was I doing at the beginning of this video to forget that intro? Um, sorry, uh, but wiki, wiki out.